The Johannesburg launch of Matt's latest release was booked up in no time by avid fans, journalists and foodies. The world watches his show everywhere from Venezuela to the Sudan. And chef and Cambridge anthropologist Anna Trapido has a good idea why that is. I've had the opportunity to kind of squish through the book, but what are your thoughts around it? Now, I thought it was very charming the way that he has so much of himself in the book. For instance, he has a great uncle who in the 19th century wrote a book on dining for gentlemen, who really was a, an early food critic, rather like him. And each chapter begins with a paragraph from the late uncle's cookbook, which is very sweet, and you get a real sense of who he is and where he's come from. Yeah. But in terms of the actual recipes, it's sort of simple, easy. It's very Australian, you know, it's got a sense that life is supposed to be lived, that it's supposed to be about joy, that it's not supposed to be about Too difficult. <laughs> how fine you chop the onions and how difficult life can be. It's yeah. about the sun shines and life is good. One of the recipes in Matt's cookbook that says it perfectly is his Middle Eastern rice pudding, topped with crushed pistachios, raspberries and rose water. Matt, you were actually born in London and moved to Australia. Yes. What inspired that? Um, love. <laughs> I was in love with an Australian girl, um, so I moved out there to be with her. Uh, I thought I'd go for a year and it'd be fine. And I ended up falling in love with someone else <laughs> um, and marrying them. And suddenly, here I am 21 years later, having fallen in love with, with Melbourne, where I live, and just in the whole of that continent. I mean, to come grow up in London, which is so crowded, yeah. so sort of like this, to go to a country suddenly where you can see the stars yeah. and where you can hear the silence is an amazing thing to do. You won't meet a girl in South Africa, but you'll do a lot more South African trips, I'm hoping. It's very strange. We make this show, me, George and Gary, in this kind of shed um, out by the race course in Melbourne. And, and you just, when you make the show, you think about, you know, the people you know in Australia watching it. To come here into South Africa and meet so many fans of the show and to do this, just on obviously this breakfast, yeah. and to have 300, over 300 people come. There's nothing better coming and talking to people about what they've seen on the show or yeah. what, what they've loved to cook or, or trying to give them some sense of what happens behind the scenes. But then also, the, the payback I get is I get to talk to them about their favourite recipes, Absolutely. their favourite places to eat. Yeah. I get to eat in Cape Town, in, in Joburg. Also, I, you know, I love my rugby, so I get to go and watch the Stormers <laughs> play the Rebels, even though they lost. Um, <laughs> but, I, but I get to do that, so I get to really enjoy, enjoy this, uh, this amazing country. Who cooks in your home? Um, and the way it works is that when we're filming, um, I normally come home about 7.30 in the evening. I start about 7.30, I come home 7.30. By that point, the kids have eaten, my wife's cooked them dinner, and I, I arrive to the washing up. So I come in, <laughs> I take off the jacket, I do the washing up, my wife's putting the kids to bed, and then when I've done that, I go up and say goodnight to the kids. At the weekend, um, I will normally cook. If we've got friends over, I'll cook as well. Um, but you know, cooking for kids is way harder than cooking for people. Really? Right. And my daughter will sit there and she will just... She will just flick things off the plate she doesn't like and go, next time, Dad. <laughs> so they, they tend to, when I get it right, they're the, the biggest, the biggest uh, fans. When I get it wrong, they let me know very quickly. When it comes to doing books like, like, like my books, it, it, they get to taste everything and they're absolutely honest. If they don't like a dish, we're gone. There's also instant feedback from his Facebook and Twitter fans to recipes like the Botswana breakfast with crunchy peanut butter, jam and pup. I am not going to show you or <laughs> South Africa how to make pap because that would be wrong. I'm just a, a humble Australian cook. But here's the pap. I know that you you make and you make a beautiful pap. Yeah. Now I want you now now to, to finish this off in that wonderful style. There. I think okay. you find this in as well as um, Botswana. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Very popular in Zimbabwe as well. So I'm, I'm just going to, because I, I love this combination of putting some milk around the outside. Right. I love that combination of hot pup and, um, and cold, cold milk. Well, I think this is fantastic and that is looking amazing, so... So my question is, are yeah. you, are you a, when you eat your, your porridge, are you a stirrer or are you a little picky, delicate, a bit of this, a bit of that? I'm a stirrer, big time. <laughs> Thank Go. you very much. Okay. Get in there. I want a bit of everything, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and that, and that, and it, but it, but it shouldn't be so stirred it's all even, so look, let, let's cut some of that peanut butter. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, there we go. Mmm. Mm. As a South African, I've grown up eating pup, but the combination of peanut butter and the jam and the sugar is absolutely amazing. You have to try it when you get home. Mmm, delicious. Matt has three million people watching his show in India. And a favourite breakfast dish from the subcontinent is Indian spiced honey and yoghurt. 
I just love how food's also just changed and revolutionized. I mean, it's so trendy. It's not, you don't eat just because you're hungry, you eat because you, but, it's an experience. But, but the whole thing is that this, there's nothing new in this idea of food being important. Yeah. You know, I mean, you think of all the major things, you know, when you're born, you know, at that celebration, there's always a spread. And when you get married, uh, there's always a spread. Yeah. At your birthday party, there's always something to eat. Even at that point when you, you know, you pass on and there's that celebration of your life at the end, it's all built around having a meal together. Yeah. So, so food is, is, is so much more than just, uh, just nutrition. It's a, it's, a, it's a social glue that bonds yeah. us all together. And the beautiful thing about it is it's universal. So a little bit of, a little bit of honey, a little bit of nut, and a little bit of the yogurt. Ooh. Mm. Now, that infused starnies, cinnamon, just changes the complete flavor of the yogurt. And everything else just come out of a packet. Mm. Yogurt, yogurt out of the top, nuts out of a packet. That honey can sit, you know, for, for a month or so, and just enhancing every breakfast. Well, Matt, it's been an absolute pleasure, but I'm not letting you go until you sign this book for me. Obviously, it's your going to be mine, but it's your book. You know, you know what, I saw you put this here and I wondered why, but now I know. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Eat well, cook, and yes. Thank you. Fabulous. It's Summer. been absolutely amazing. No. I can't wait to try almost every single recipe because you make it look so easy. You know what? Cooking is easy. You know that. I Simple. Do. <laughs>